A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. In this video, I'm gonna talk you through how to get pin sharp images. I'm gonna say why megapixels doesn't really matter and I'll show you how to get shots like these. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I'm still in Harris on this month long project. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm photographing the same beach for a month and I'm producing a short film around that. So something like a documentary short film and then I'm also producing a book from it as well. So it's really exciting, I can't wait to share it. I'm not sure exactly when it's gonna come out because there's a lot of work to do when I get home but I've taken so many photos. So onto sharp images, there's four primary reasons why you get unsharp images and I want to sort of go through those and I'll show you some examples as well. And make sure you stick around to the end because then I'm going to show you why you can have images that are too sharp and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Lightroom. Okay, onto the first one, which is the obvious one, which is just camera shake. So making sure your camera is sturdy. If I hand hold my camera, then I make sure that I have it really close to my body. And then I also recommend that you try different shutter speeds in different conditions. So if it's calm, go out, put some different lenses on, because obviously if you're shooting with a longer lens, like a 200 millimeter lens, then you're gonna to have to have a faster shutter speed than if you're shooting with a wide angle lens like this 14 to 24 millimeter, because on this you'd probably get away with like a 20th of a second even in wind, but on a 200 millimeter lens, you're not going to. But everybody's different when you're hand holding it. So what I'd recommend is go and do some tests, see what you can do and have a look at it. But make sure that when you're doing it, you're not holding it like that and looking at the back of the screen, look through the eyepiece and hold it really tight. But most of the time in landscape photography, what I'd recommend is putting it on a tripod. And if you're gonna get a tripod, then I'd make sure you get a reasonably sturdy one. I know it's more to carry, but it's really useful to have a sturdy tripod. Because again, if it's windy, you don't want your tripod falling over and a bigger tripod's always going to give you more stability. So when you've got it on your tripod, what I'd also recommend is getting an L bracket because if you're doing portrait shots, um, you don't want it just at, at the side like that where it's leveraging off to the side um, and, and then becoming unstable. You want a very stable platform. And then make sure you put it on rock if you can. Um, you know, if, there's, if you're shooting somewhere and you've got a choice of where you're shooting, try and get it as stable as possible. Often you don't have that choice because obviously you're going to be shooting a very tight composition, but that's really important. So once you've got your, your, your tripod stable, there's a few things, a few tips to make sure to get really sharp images. So the first thing is don't use your shutter button. <laughs> so when, when, you, when you're on your tripod, I've seen loads of people put it on a tripod, they've got a second longer exposure and they press the shutter button. And that means that you're gonna have some vibration. If you're going to use your shutter button, then what I'd recommend is having something like a five second delay. Um, and then when you press it, it then delays before it takes the actual shot. And then any sort of vibration is going to minimize. The longer the lens, again, the more important that is. Again, you just won't notice it, but if you're shooting at 200 millimeters, any tiny vibration will be noticed. So you want that to settle down a little bit. Or the other thing I'd recommend is use a remote, which I use and I've got a little remote and I just press it and it just means it makes life so much easier because I'm disconnected from my camera then so I can, it can be settled down really stable. And then the, fin the final thing for on a tripod, make sure you don't have a strap on it. So have a removable strap because if you have a strap on it, you're gonna have something that's gonna blow in the wind. And then also a lens hood as well. You know, take the lens hood off unless you need it for flare or it's raining because you know, it's gonna, it's gonna act like a, a bit of a windmill. It's gonna push it around. So you don't want that to happen really. The next thing is focus. This is the thing that most people worry about, but it's not too difficult. And I'm gonna link you to some videos up here um, throughout this. So just, just check out those out because there's some more in-depth videos that I can point you to that will help you with focus. So most of the time you wanna get everything in focus. You wanna have it, have it sharp from the front to the back. Um, I certainly do, I, I, I think that's better. But there are times when you don't want that, like beach baubles that I took here, which is one of my favorite images. So you can be a little bit creative with the foreground sometime and have it out of focus, but you've gotta be purposefully out of focus. If you want everything in focus, then you've gotta think about depth of field. And depth of field is impacted by two things. It's impacted by Aperture, and I'm sort of simplifying this a little bit, but it, that's, that's important to simplify it, I think, because there's a lot of complexity in it. 
but it, it's impacted by aperture. So um, whether you shoot in f2.8 or f11, which will obviously have more in focus, and it's also impacted by your focal length. So if you're shooting at 200 millimeters, you're gonna have less in focus than you're shooting at 14 millimeters. So for instance, this shot that I took in Harris is shot at 14 millimeters. And um, I don't have to be that careful with that because everything's gonna be in focus front to back at F8. Um, even things that are like a meter or two in front of me uh, because the wider you have it, the more is in focus. And that's why when you're shooting with your phone, I think this is like a, a three millimeter lens or something, you know, you don't really worry about it too much because everything's in focus all the time. So then it comes down to choosing the correct aperture. And the reason it's important to choose the correct aperture is you don't just want to go to F22 because as you go from F2.8 up to F22, then you start to get what's called diffraction. And diffraction, means that you get a less sharp image. So you've got to choose that correct aperture for the depth of field that you want. And what I'd recommend using is PhotoPills. So PhotoPills is a great app and what you can do, you can go into here and see depth of field and um, then what you can do is you can put in your camera, you can put in the focal length that you're shooting at. So say I'm shooting at um, 24 millimeters at F10. Then I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna focus on infinity. Because in doubt, what I'd always say is focus on the furthest object away. And then that will tell me that the at F10, the near point of focus is going to be 1.91 meters away. So you can see it's 1.91 meters away. And that's what's called acceptably sharp. Now I usually double that. So I would, because acceptable sharp isn't pin sharp. So if you double that and say four meters away, then, then everything at four meters away is gonna be in sharp all the way to infinity if you, sh if you focus on infinity. And I'm gonna link a video here to explain this in a lot more detail. So go and take a look at that. But basically, this is a really good app. It'll really help you to decide what aperture to use. And you don't wanna push it too far because if you push it too far, your result's gonna get a lot softer. Um, and then, there might be a, a, a case where you can't do it. You just can't get everything in focus. You think, oh, I don't want to go to F22 because that's just going to, everything's going to be soft. So you decide on F11, say, but then the foreground's not sharp. So you've got to focus stack. So you then got to focus on the distance. You've got to focus on the foreground and you've got to blend those together. And there's a video here explaining how that, to do that. It's super easy to do. You don't have to worry about it. What I'd recommend, even if you can't do it now, is when you go out, make sure you do that. What I do is I have my camera on my tripod like that, and I just go focus, take shot at the top, focus, take shot at the bottom, and that's it. It's as simple as that. And then you've got that data, and you can worry about it later. You don't have to um, you know, worry about it when you're, when you're in your field, even if you can't focus stack now, get that information. And I just wanna show you these two images here. So this image was taken at 24 millimeters, and you can see this is in, in Harris, and you can see everything from the front to the back is in focus. Whereas this one, same scene taken at 38 millimeters, same aperture of F11, the back's in focus, but the front is not pin sharp. Because I've gone to a longer focal length, everything's not in focus now. So now on this one, I'd have to focus stack. Okay, on to the last two points. The next one is lenses. Understanding your lenses is really important. The best tip I can say is that most lenses are sharper at f2.8 than they are at f22. Um, so what I'd recommend is go and have a look for your particular lenses. So I know that um, my 24 to 200 millimeter lens is sharper wide open than it is um, at like f13 or something. But then it's also important to know the characteristics of your lens. So understanding whether, whether it's sharper at um, 24 millimeters or 200 millimeters, then you know where to, when to swap to a different lens potentially. Um, a prime lens like this 50 millimeter f1.8 is going to be the sharpest. However, sometimes I use my 24 to 200 over something like my 24 to 120, which is definitely sharper, just because it's more convenient. So the best thing I'd say about lenses is understand that they're sharper wide open and understand the characteristics of your own lenses, understand where they're good so that then you've got a mental picture of that when you're out. The other thing is make sure your lens is clean because that can affect the sharpness of the image. If you've got um, 
any um, moisture or um, oil on your lens, then the light's not going to go through the lens, lens correctly. There's going to be interference and you're going to get a less sharp image. That's really important. Okay. I just want to talk a little bit, um, before I go on to Lightroom quickly, I just want to talk a little bit about megapixels. Megapixels are nothing to do with sharpness. If you print an image this big, so an A3 image, at 12 megapixels or at 48 megapixels, you will not see the difference between the two. Um, as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you start to see the difference, but that's nothing to do with sharpness, that's to do with the amount of information that's stored in the image. A 48 megapixel image that's slightly out of focus or you've moved the camera, is not going to be good. A 12 megapixel sharp image is going to be way better. So people get those two things confused. They're not the same thing. One's more information. One is the image is correctly focused and you've not um, moved the camera. It's sharp. So that's really important. So don't worry if you've got a lower megapixel image, you can still get super sharp images that will be brilliant printed, brilliant showing on the web. And you don't need to worry about it. Okay, can an image be too sharp? It can because people over sharpen them all the time in Lightroom. So on this woodland image here, I, I wasn't that um, bothered about everything being pin sharp. I wanted the foreground to be sharp. I wanted these trees to be sharp. So I, I focused on one of these trees here and you can see that that is super pin sharp, but I'm not too bothered um, about the distance here. So these trees in the background, because it was foggy, it doesn't really matter too much. The other thing is that you don't want to over sharpen it. So I, I, you, you apply an amount of sharpening. To be honest, I very often don't mess with the sharpening at all. <laughs> I think people get carried away with sharpening in Lightroom thinking that that's going to create a sharp image. A sharp image is created in your camera. It's not created in Lightroom. Now, you, there are really good tools that allow you to add sharpening afterwards um, in Photoshop and Lightroom. So you can do that, but don't overdo it because what happens is you, you lose the mystery of that image. It becomes too crispy and um, a, a sharp image isn't necessarily the best image. You know, some images look better a little bit sharper. Some, you know, like this image here that I took in, in Harris as well, is, is, isn't going to benefit a huge amount from being sharp. And in fact, this image I actually did as an ICM where I moved my camera. And you could argue that the blurred one is better than the super sharp one. So sharpness is a thing that you can get carried away about. What I'd recommend is make sure you're in the camera you can get the sharpest image possible, but then don't worry too much about trying to do it afterwards in Lightroom. Um, I, I hardly ever mess with sharpening. I, the only thing I do is just move the thing left and right a little bit. Don't do it too much. It looks horrible. It looks too crispy. So I haven't covered a few other things. I've not covered things like ISO. Um, ISO is a, is a funny thing. It gives you more grain. It doesn't reduce the sharpness so much, but it effectively looks a little bit less sharp because it adds more grain to the image. It adds more noise to the image, which obviously can look less sharp. Um, and also ISO re re reduces the dynamic range, which can affect sharpness as well. But I don't want to go into those in too much detail. I think what I've explained should help you try to get sharper images. It's not that difficult, to be honest, um, once you've got a few things under your belt. So good luck. Um, and I hope that they work for you out in the field. I want to say thanks to this week's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Squarespace is a fantastic platform to put all those sharp images once you've taken them. Um, and it is a really seriously great place to share your photos because you're in control. You don't have to worry about the algorithm on Instagram, the sizing on Instagram, because they ruin any sharp images Instagram does, um, or Facebook or Twitter. Twitter's probably the best, but the best thing to do is be in control of it and have your own where you can curate your images, you can write a blog, you can even open a store and sell prints if you're ready to do that. So if you're looking to create your own website, make sure you go and check out Squarespace below. There's 10% off by going to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel or use offer code Nigel. Anyway, I'm back to um, the beach in a minute um, to take some shots. I'm going to shoot some shells on the, on the shore. Say that if you're drunk. Thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.